All right, welcome to this Mary Canley webinar, not just Mary Canley, but leadership. So this is ideally for directors. And the topic is how to motivate and lead your team in 2020. That's me in the middle, Sean Smith. Uh, I'm the founder of pinkcaddycoach.com. If you're not familiar with our blog there, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself as we go on. So the purpose of this webinar is for us to go roughly 45 minutes or so. I'll teach you how to motivate and lead your teams in 2020 from the mindset of a coach, not just the mindset of a teacher or a trainer. Now there's nothing wrong with teaching and training. I just want to create a distinction. Teaching and training is essentially telling people what to do. A coach is when we help people implement what they're not implementing. So in other words, teaching and training is more about delivering information. Coaching is more about facilitating implementation. We all know what we need to be doing, but most of us are not doing it. So if we're not doing it, then we need a coach. We don't need more information. We need to know how to implement what we're not implementing currently. And the expectations here, are that if you're enjoying what you're liking, share any ahas you want in the Pink Caddy Facebook group. Uh, there's the link right there in the, uh, on the slides. If you haven't joined that group, you can go ahead and join that. Write your questions in the chat box as we go along. Take notes of inspiration, not just take notes of information. This is being recorded, so you can go back and capture any of the information later but capture the inspired thoughts that you have, not just my thoughts. And then stick around to the end. We'll talk about how you can go deeper and get my and my team's individualized support. So what's possible? It's absolutely possible to inspire your teams in today's world into action and growth, all while having fun and being fulfilled both for yourself and your team members. But you have to understand really how times have changed how people are demanding to be led nowadays. And my invitation is also not to ask yourself if you know any of this. I want you to ask yourself if you and or your team are embodying it. Are you implementing? Is this how things are operating? Not just do we already know this information. We all know the information, but intellectual information is not ever going to lead to a breakthrough. We can only implement our way to a breakthrough. We can only implement our way to our goals and to our dreams. So we all have the information, but the problem is we're not using it. So most people know what to do, but most people are not doing what they know. That's why what we need is coaching implementation and not just more teaching information. So if you don't know me, I'll give you the 50 second version here. I'm a father and a husband. My family is right there on the screen. My wife, McKenna, my wife, Sybil, sorry, uh, my daughter, McKenna, and son, Exley. In December 17th, on December 17th, 1986, I was almost killed, which made my life completely shift. I started looking at goal setting and achievement from a completely different place. And I just basically made myself a promise that I would do everything I could to live this life the way I wanted to live it because we don't ever know when our last breath is going to be. But even though I'd made that promise to myself for nearly 20 years, I was still struggling until 2005. I had a massive breakthrough and I just felt a shift in my body. My wife asked me what happened, why I looked different. My friends were asking me what happened and I just really wanted people to feel the same feeling that I had. And the very next year I started the brand in Mary Kay, which is still alive to this day, of Pink Caddy Coach. So that's who I am in a nutshell. And let's start by talking about where our world is in 2020. We are being bombarded nowadays with hyper-aggressive marketing, and we are overwhelmed with digital information and the illusion of connection the illusion of connection. Now we have digital connection, but we don't have human connection the way we used to. So we can get any information that we want. We can connect ourselves with just about anything around the globe digitally, but the sacrifice of that has been human connection. That's what most of us are missing. 
and our brains are literally being rewired. They are different than they used to be because of all of this online overwhelm. And if our brains are different, then we're dealing with different humans. I mean, we're actually dealing with different animals than we used to be 20 years ago, before all of this onslaught with the digital age, let's call it. And from a leadership perspective and a business perspective, there are three things that are harder nowadays than they've ever been. The first one is to get people's attention. Then once you have their attention, to get their engagement. And then once you have their engagement, to get their commitment. And what most people are doing is still trying to lead and recruit and sell the way we did it 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And that's why it doesn't work because we didn't have all of the competition for people's attention 15, 20 years ago that we do now. We didn't have all of the abundance of opportunities. We didn't have a lot of people that have been taken advantage of online. So we're dealing with different people in a different environment in the world, not just online. And we have to understand that because if we don't get people's attention, then there's no way to get their engagement and there's no way to get their commitment. But what most people are doing is trying to go backwards. Or if they're not going backwards, they're just not paying enough attention to the first two elements there. So they're just still trying to get people's commitment the way we always did and getting really, really frustrated in the process. So here is the million dollar question. How do we get engaged and committed volunteers with no extrinsic leverage in today's world of hyper distraction and hyper overwhelm? So let me break that down. We want people who are engaged and who are committed, but they are volunteers with no extrinsic leverage, meaning they can't be fired from a job and they can't immediately make money if they make a, a few phone calls. So there's not an immediate extrinsic system of rewards. In other words, there's no reason for them to do this immediately and extrinsically. And leading volunteers is way different than leading a team of employees. And a lot of our training on leadership is based on leading employees or leading people who have intrinsic or extrinsic leverage already. But these are different animals here with different factors and different variables. So this is what we need to take into consideration for your experience in Mary Kay, because there isn't any extrinsic leverage immediately with these people who are volunteers. Now, our essence as humans hasn't changed. We still want freedom in whatever way we want freedom, in however that looks to us. So the details of how and where we want freedom might be different between people. But the human's desire to be free is still the same. But how we connect with each other has drastically changed based on all the things that I was talking about. Now, the good news is it's actually easier to penetrate people's distractions and penetrate people's armor with true connection because true connection is now more rare than it used to be. 20 years ago, it's all we had because there was no such thing as online connection. So it's more rare, which means it's actually more valued and more valuable when people feel true connection now because it's such a rare thing. The bad news, though, is that's what most people are afraid of. Most people are afraid of doing the things that create true connection. So for those of us who are willing to do what creates real human connection, the opportunity to build a team and to inspire people is actually more powerful than it used to be. But we have to be willing to do what it works or, or what works rather. We have to be willing to follow the required recipe. And this is where 
people are being filtered out left and right. They know what to do, but they're not doing it because they're afraid of actually doing what works. So now attention in today's world has to come from internal means. What I mean by that is we live in a targeting culture. I've never used that phrase until earlier today when I was writing these notes. We live in a targeting culture, which means we are being targeted. If you take a look at the way a lot of the platforms nowadays are interacting with us, Netflix gives you a list of all the shows and all the movies based on what you've watched before. YouTube, exact same thing. You've got suggested videos on the right-hand side based on what you've watched before. Amazon suggests products for you to purchase based on what you've purchased before. Google puts advertisements in front of your face based on how you've navigated online before. So everything is based on your individual preferences and patterns. This is brand new. Preferences and patterns, brand new in the sense that we've only seen this over the last 10 years, really. 15 years tops, but it's been hyper amplified over the last three to five years. So what that means is people's experience of the world is based on their individual preferences and patterns. We have been programmed away from general menus. We've been programmed away from having to, listen to what I'm about to say, having to spend the time to actually sift through information. We don't go to libraries anymore. Who's got time for that? We don't go to bookstores anymore. Who's got time for that? We don't go to restaurants anymore and actually order our food. Who's got time for that? We get everything brought to us. And because we have the means at least, not that all of us are doing this all over the place, but this is the way society is moving. Because we have the means to get everything brought to us, we're not taking the steps that we used to have to take in the past. And this is so critical to understand because if human preferences and patterns are changing, then human leadership must change. If you're in the human business, we need to understand how humans are changing. So this statement just hit me so hard earlier today. Generic tactics have zero chance to succeed. When you start putting generic tactics in front of people, whether it's leadership tactics or sales tactics or recruiting tactics or any other tactics that involve human and it's generic, we just simply can't win anymore because that's not the way society works anymore. So we cannot do what we used to be able to do and get the same results. And in today's world, there are three main things that are required elements of leadership. Authenticity, transparency, and truth. These are way more critical than they've ever been because people have been taken advantage of over the last 10 to 15 years online, which wasn't even available back in the day. This wasn't even available 20 years ago where people were taken advantage of online. This, what online has done is sped up our collisions with each other, which means it's sped up our collisions with good stuff, but it's also sped up our collisions with negative stuff. So pretty much everybody has fallen for something online that they wish they wouldn't have fallen for. Pretty much all of us have bought something and then not had our expectations met. We bought something and then realized that we fell for something completely fake. And humans do not like being taken advantage of. They do not like feeling that they were vulnerable and somebody took them for a ride. So most people have grown to be way more skeptical than they've ever been. And what that means is they don't trust. We as humans in the digital age do not trust other humans anymore. We don't trust anything that looks like marketing. We don't trust anything that looks like opportunities the way we used to. So that's what we now have to overcome, you guys. 
We have to overcome the human skepticism that is now just coursing through our veins. We can spend all day wishing it was different. We can spend all day talking about how it used to be. None of that matters because that's not how it is anymore. But again, this provides a powerful opportunity for those of us that are willing to be authentic, to be transparent, and to be truthful, because this is the way to pierce people's armor of skepticism. And just like with the last bad news, this is what most people are afraid of. Most people are afraid of being authentic. Most people are afraid of being transparent. Most people are afraid of dropping their guard. Most people are afraid of actually being seen. Most people are afraid of actually connecting on a human level. Most people are afraid of telling the absolute truth all the time about everything they possibly can. Most people are afraid of the very thing that not only works better, but the very thing that only works nowadays. I hope that last piece is really landing with you. This is the only thing that works to create trust nowadays, and that's what most people are afraid of. Now, I wanted to show you this slide. This is taken from one of our coaching certification courses. I'm not going to teach all of this content, but I want you to see this slide because this is what's going on at an individual level. We have so many variables happening inside of our brains that most of us aren't aware of. What most of us think is there's just an external event and then there's a behavior right away. But we don't realize what's happening on the inside. It's like there's this internal pinball machine where whatever it is that we just experienced is pinballing and colliding with so much information that our brains are storing. Language, memories, decisions, metaprograms, perceptions, experiences, traumas, drivers, identities, values, beliefs, all of this input is happening inside of our brain, which is why every single one of us has a truly unique experience of the world. The reason I want you to see this slide is because I want you to have an idea of some of the labels that we teach from a coaching perspective that we have to know if we're going to help people overcome their individual obstacles. These are the variables that we're taking into account. We will never coach two people the same ever because we know two people will never have the same breakthrough path. Two people will never have the same solutions, even if the problems look the exact same, because there is no such thing as identical human behavior when we really take a look at the individual reasons behind the behavior. So this is why we can't have a generic approach to solving individual solutions. So with all of that in mind, there are three main things. Sorry, this picture just makes me laugh. There are three main things. Well, I, I should apologize for it. This picture is funny to me, and you'll see why in a second. There are three main things that we have to do from a leadership standpoint, and I want to keep this very simple for you because simplicity is what wins when distraction and overwhelm run the day. We can't combat overwhelm with complication and get anywhere. Our lives are already massively complicated. The way to overcome complication is with simplicity. So I want to give you three main things and I want you to be able to go back and implement them in some way, shape or form in your life and in your business. Individualized targets is the first thing. And this is, this is all Mary Kay specific, by the way. Consultants don't enjoy battle royale matches where only one person wins and or the bar is static for everyone. What that means is in order to get recognized, you have to cross this line and the line is the same for everyone. Consultants don't like that. And consultants also don't like when there's only one Winner. So this image is from, you know, a wrestling match where everybody's fighting each other and there's going to be one woman standing. Consultants don't like the idea that there's only going to be one person standing at the end of the challenge. 
or everybody has the same bar to cross. They don't like it because most of them will disqualify themselves before they even get into the ring because they don't believe they can win. And this is based on their own limiting beliefs. It's based on all of the traumas and decisions and metaprograms and all the stuff from the previous slide. And so if you really want to help as many individuals as possible, you can't pit them against each other or treat all of them the same and get the most out of each individual person. Now, this is not philosophical. This is what they tell us. We've been coaching in the Mary Kay world for 15 years. I'm a reporter right now. I'm not telling you what I think is true. I'm telling you why they tell us, consultants, why they tell us they stop going to meetings. I'm telling you why they tell us they quit Mary Kay, why they don't enjoy the competition. So, so this is reporting what we're being told. This is not theory. This is not philosophy here. So the reason that so many people that you're wanting to lead don't follow is because they don't engage with the one size fits all leadership tactics or the generic awards being presented to only one person or only the people that pass this one bar. I mean, think about it. Somebody who's 26 years old with no children, no husband, and has all the time in the world, why would she be put up against somebody who's 50 years old with four kids, uh, divorced, and is responsible for keeping the house together and doesn't have anybody to help her? Why would those two people be pitted against each other? Now, I know what most directors tell us is, well, we don't really pit them up against each other, but that's what they feel like. So it doesn't really matter what we think is happening. What matters is how do they feel? So the key factor here is, or, or the key focus here, is I want you to ask yourself, how can I facilitate winning for each individual person? How can I give each individual person an opportunity to win? The woman who has 90 minutes a week to give and the woman who has 90 hours a week to give. Each one of them need individual targets if you want them to engage. And there are a lot of women actually who could be doing a lot more, but the bar is set below what their capacity is. Most women, the bar is set too high, but for some women, the bar is actually set too low. The bar needs to be individual. When the targets are individual, then people think, I can win here. And the idea of being able to win is exciting for all of us. If we don't think we can win, we're not going to be excited about participating. So individual targets for everyone. Once you have individual targets, individualized game plans for everyone. One of the tenets of coaching that we live by is keep people at choice, meaning keep them choosing what their targets are, and what their game plans are. One of the worst things we can do for people is to give them a generic set of instructions for them to win in their life. We know that these instructions are not written for us individually. These instructions are essentially an assembly line. And even if the instructions are true, it doesn't matter, you guys. It doesn't matter if the instructions are true. What matters is whether people feel like they chose them or not. So if you give somebody a set of instructions, which in this context means make a list of people, make phone calls, go out and warm chat, set up booths or whatever the game plan is in a general sense to succeed in Mary Kay, if you give them a set of instructions, a game plan that's factually true, which is, which is true, like, Though there are only a few ways to succeed in Mary Kay. There are only a few ways, there are only a few activities that people need to do to succeed at Mary Kay. And those activities haven't changed. We still have to communicate with people. Now, you might need to text a little bit more than you made phone calls, and you might need to do a little bit 
more online than you ever did before, but essentially we're still needing to communicate and connect with people. The essential elements have not changed. So it's not about whether the activities are true or not. It's about whether people feel like they chose them. And here's how I learned this. Many years ago, I was trying to figure out why so many women in Mary Kay weren't following the guidelines, weren't following the game plans that were given to them. And it was because of what I just said. And so what I started to do is make individualized game plans with people. And I said, what is it that you want to do? Who do you want to have this business benefit? Are you trying to retire your husband? Are you trying to create a college fund? What are your specific goals? We started with their goals and then we kept them at choice the whole way. Knowing what you know about Mary Kay, what do you think you want to do? Not what you need to do, but what do you want to do? And people would say, well, I want to share the opportunity with X number of people a week, or I really want to go out and warm chat, or I really want to buy leads or whatever the case is, it doesn't matter. But the point is they wanted to do it. And what would happen is almost without fail, their game plan ended up being almost identical as the generic game plan. But here was the thing. They were following it. They were actually committing to the game plan when it was theirs individually, but they weren't committing to the game plan when it was general. But the game plan was essentially the same. That started to blow my mind and I started to identify and really explore what's the element here. Why does somebody not follow this game plan, but follow that game plan when the game plans are the same? It's this piece right here. Did they choose this? Do they feel like this was created from their unique target? Does it have their family members' names on it? Does it have their individual goals on it? If it doesn't, then we're trying to push them into following generalized game plans. And from a coaching standpoint, I've never seen a personal breakthrough come at the hands of a general program. Meaning I've never seen anybody follow a general set of rules and have a personal breakthrough. I've just never seen it. So we will always commit more and we will always be more loyal to our own personal path, the one that we came up with, the one that has our name on it, than a generalized approach. And going back to something I said earlier, we have to keep this simple. Repeated simplicity is what wins, not complication. And in today's world, way too many leaders are trying to be, even though this is not their conscious intention, but they are being way too complicated. Don't use complication to combat complication. Use simplicity. So you've got individualized targets, you've got individualized game plans, and the third one here is individualized inspiration. <clears throat> Excuse me. Motivation is essentially what most leadership is trying to get. People that are motivated to go after their goals. But motivation is based on extrinsic rewards. An extrinsic reward is something external. It's something measurable. It's something based on performance. If I perform, then I will get a reward based on the performance. Most of our lives have been based on extrinsic rewards. So this is not a Mary Kay problem. This is a society programming that doesn't work for almost anybody. So motivation based on extrinsic rewards will be short-lived because motivation itself is short-lived. Motivation is coming from the ego's desire to achieve something. And that's why it's short-lived. It's short-lived because something can change in the external environment and crush your motivation. This happens all the time when people go to seminar, you go to career conference, or you go to leadership, or you go to your success meeting, or you read a book, or you get excited about whatever, 
and that excitement in a very short period of time, whether it's hours, days, weeks, months, if you're lucky, but most people's motivation dies within a few days. If it's not continually fed, but being continually fed is actually not a good thing. It's fueled by unstable factors. Unstable factors like we constantly need other people's approval, other people's attention, other people's uh, decisions, other people's choices, other people's money. Anytime that we're dependent on other people doing things, saying things, thinking things, keeping their promises, we're dealing with unstable factors. And here's one thing the human brain hates instability. The human brain is not interested in committing to a path of instability. It is not interested in committing to a path that it cannot control. Many of our patterns, I would say most of our patterns, are fueled by the desire to be in control of our lives, of our income, of our influence, of our happiness, of our joy, of our fulfillment. We crave being in control. External factors can never be under our control. This is one of the biggest reasons why humans really struggle in business, especially direct sales, especially in Mary Kay, because we're being driven by, fueled by, we're focusing on, and we think we're being motivated by factors that our brains actually despise. Let me repeat that. I might not say the exact same words, but we are being driven by, and we think we should be motivated by factors that our brains despise. And I'm using that word intentionally. It's not that we just don't like it. It's our brains despise instability. So a lot of the things that we do, including the way that we sabotage ourselves, including the reason why you might want to go clean the garage or fold laundry instead of making phone calls is because in those other activities, at the very least, you know what's going to happen. You have control, you have stability. It's not going to lead you to your goals, but the brain is actually not more driven by goals than it is by stability and control. Our brain is way more driven by control than it is by these theoretical goals when we say, if we do all this work, we'll achieve something in the future. That's like giving ourselves emotional IOUs. If you do this for me, I promise you in the future, you'll feel good enough. You'll feel happy. You'll feel joyful. You'll feel fulfilled. The brain isn't interested in emotional future-based IOUs. The brain is interested in control, stability, right now moments. That's what the brain is interested in. This is why external future-driven factors and rewards don't work for almost anybody. Hopefully this is landing for you. If it is, please type it in the chat box here. This also creates dependence on the source of the rewards. What that means is if you get a human dependent on or even addicted to external rewards, then you can't take those rewards away. Otherwise, their effort will go away also. So that's why I say external motivation never works because it doesn't work for most people. And when it does work, it doesn't work long term. It doesn't work long term because we don't want people addicted to the extrinsic rewards. Now, let me say this. There's nothing wrong with enjoying external rewards. There's nothing wrong with enjoying success. There's nothing wrong with liking recognition, with liking rewards. I'm not saying that we should never use this, but it can't be based on this. So I want to be really clear. This needs to be icing on the cake rather than the whole cake. So if there are extrinsic rewards, that's fine, but there must be intrinsic inspiration first. And then the extrinsic rewards are secondary. The key distinguishing factor here is, do people like this or do people need this? 
There's nothing wrong with people liking and wanting extrinsic rewards. There's everything wrong with people needing desperately extrinsic rewards. That's the distinction here. And if you create dependency on rewards, then you can never be removed. If you as the leader are the one that's supplying the reward, you can't go away, which means you don't have a independent business. You have a dependent or codependent maybe even relationship because the people can't motivate themselves without your rewards. So that's where this gets really challenging and really frustrating for directors specifically when they can't remove themselves from the process. So what we need is inspiration based on intrinsic rewards. And you guys, I'm talking about human behavior just applied to Mary Kay. So if you're noticing that you're not going out and making the phone calls or talking to people or following up or whatever it is that you know you should be doing, then hopefully this is landing for you as to why. But maybe this isn't landing for you personally if you're a director, but your team members are not following through. Then this is why, I promise you, this is either going to relate to you personally or it's going to relate to your team members or it'll relate to both. Because I promise you about 97% of the population needs intrinsic inspiration in order to get going. They've already decided they can't win according to the extrinsic rewards. So intrinsic inspiration is long lasting. It's fueled by internal factors, which means they're way more consistent and it creates independence and actually it creates duplication because when people get inspired from within, it's easier for them to help other people get inspired from within, just like they got inspired from within. Now, this might seem counterintellectual. It makes sense that if you just give everything the same to everybody, then that's the way you'll create duplication. But if the human is not inspired to take action, it doesn't matter how simple the training is. If they're not taking action, then the training isn't going anywhere. The training isn't being duplicated or being passed on because the human's not taking action. So this isn't theoretical. This is based on human behavior and what inspires people to keep going. Individualization of everything is what we need nowadays. So individualized targets, individualized game plans to get those targets, and individualized inspiration to fuel people from within. A lot of people don't like hearing this because it sounds hard or it sounds really time consuming. You mean I got to talk to all of these people individually only if you want to succeed, only if you want to help people win. Yes. And if there was another way, it would already be working. So sometimes we just got to take a look at what's actually working or what's not working. But here's the thing. When we plant seeds in individual people, then the duplication can come after we plant the foundation of success. But if you try to rush yourself through success and you hop over foundation, then even if it works, it won't work. It'll all come crumbling down. So what I'm telling you, based on human behavior in general, but specifically with Mary Kay, this is a way to go slow faster. It might feel like you're going slow in the beginning. Some of your conversations with individual people in the beginning might be longer than, or the process itself might feel a little longer than if you just got five people in the room and said, okay, everybody do the same thing. But what you'll get out of five people in the room trying to do the same thing is way less than what you would get if you individualize everything for the people and you can tell pretty quickly whether somebody is actually going to take the training or not and part of leadership in today's world is to meet people where they are and only lead them only give them enough information for them to take their next step so sometimes that doesn't mean a 90 minute one-on-one -on -one training session sometimes it means a 15 minute one-on-one -on -one training session and the way you would have trained 
five people or 10 people all at the same time with maybe a two hour training, you might find that you can cut that two hours up and actually train each person individually in roughly the same amount of time because you're gonna meet them where they are and help them take their next step. That way you don't have to create this general training that's gonna hopefully scoop everybody up no matter where they are. So this individualized approach counter to what a lot of people think is more time consuming quite often, but it's way more effective and it creates more long-term stability and long-term growth. It's like quality versus quantity. And what most of us are doing because of all of the online stuff that I was talking about in the beginning, what most of us are doing is we're trying to jump over foundation into success. We're trying to do things yesterday. We're trying to get the easiest path to create success so that we don't have to deal with failure, so we don't have to deal with ourselves, so that we have this guaranteed pathway toward the results that we want. And the online space and just online culture nowadays is selling that idea over and over and over and over again. And we cannot win continuing to perpetuate a lie because that is a lie. The fact that people can do the same thing and get massive results with almost no effort and not bumping up against their fears or not bumping up against their insecurities and doubts is a flat out lie. Anything that's going to require somebody to look at themselves individually, personally, is going to require some discomfort. We cannot keep telling people that they can win in a business like Mary Kay or in any kind of business without discomfort. We are flat out lying. That's why we have to be more truthful. So hopefully this has landed. And for any of you that want to take this to a whole nother level, then the best way we can support you is through a small group coaching mastermind for directors only. This training was for leadership in Mary Kay. This training was for directors only in Mary Kay. We have one director mastermind. And we have four spots open in that mastermind. For those of you that are interested, it's starting the week of March 2nd. We don't have specific dates and times because that's going to be dependent on who's in the mastermind. We're going to take a, a survey and make sure that we find the day and the time that's going to work for everybody or as many possible people that we can make it work for. So that's why we don't have exact dates and times and just hope that you fit in. When you fit in, or if you're going to do it, then when you register, we'll take into account your days and times so that we can make sure it's going to be a good fit for as many people in the mastermind as possible. So I want you to hear from just a couple people that have gone through the mastermind. Viv said going through it for directors a few months ago was so incredibly helpful to me in the way that I looked at myself as a sales director and the things that I said to myself on a moment by moment basis. Remember, we're diving in to the personal experience, not just the general experiences. So for Viv, this was about looking at some of the things that she was saying to herself on a moment to moment basis. Knowing that I'm my own person and learning to turn my negative self-talk into positive self-talk and accepting that I'm not perfect and my business won't be perfect either, but it can be successful. That almost brought tears to my eyes when I heard it for the first time. It was the most freeing thing I learned from your program, she said. I've learned to accept myself more, value myself more, love myself more, and be more gentle with myself. In doing so, I can extend that to my team and the women I'm meeting. Thank you for helping me look at myself with more kind eyes and for helping me accept me for who I am and that I can play in this field being exactly who I want to be and still succeed. That's so, so powerful for people to realize I can be me and still win. So many people have been told through society or explicitly through certain people that in order to succeed, you have to be different. You have to change. You have to be more like me. You have to be less like you. You have to be more outgoing. You have to be more of a salesperson. And none of that is true in Mary Kay. You can absolutely succeed exactly who you are as long as we match the path that's right for you 
with the person, which is you. That's what we're really focused on when we coach people. And then also from Kirsten, she says, I highly recommend investing in the program. I took so much away from my time with Sean and Michelle when I joined. I was coming out of a pretty significant life-challenging event. Being in this program helped me regain my vision, my belief in myself, and my activity in my business, all of which has led to me being more joyful, peaceful, and loving. So I want to speak to this for a second. This is an anything-goes safe space of a mastermind. And a lot of people don't have that safe space to just be real. So Kirsten was dealing with something really painful, really damaging, really um, human in her personal life. And we all have things going on in our personal lives, but most of us don't have a place to be real with that. And in your business, personal challenges will bring everything down. If you have something going on internally at a foundational level in your family, with yourself, with trauma, with grief, with something going on personally, you can't just outrun that by succeeding in your business. You've got to address what needs to be addressed so that you can build the business according to who you are and where you are in your life. So she goes on to say the support at a heart level that you'll receive as well as the other people that are in the program will fill your heart, mind, and spirit, all of which will free you up to take healthy action in your business. If you're looking for accountability, for accountability from people you can trust, this is the mastermind class. So let me give you a, a little bit of information for those of you that are interested in this. It's a small group mastermind, no more than five or six people. It's directors only, and it's for a fraction of the cost of private coaching, but you still get personalized attention, which is what most people are not getting. You'll also get group support from the other people. There is, there's accountability and there's support even in between our calls. And often your biggest breakthrough will actually come from other people's stories or other people's scenarios, other people's situations, not even just your own. The magic of a co-created supportive mastermind like this can't even adequately be put into words. So there are six weekly live support and coaching sessions with us on Zoom. There are roughly 60 to 90 minute sessions. There's some teaching that happens. There's some discussion. Plus there's individual love seats, which is where we'll give you personalized attention when appropriate. Everything is recorded and archived and everything is focused on achieving your individual goals, leading and growing your teams, and just enjoying your life. So the investment of this program is $499 if you want to pay for it all up front or $199 times three monthly payments. So we're wanting to give you a way to keep the investment low, but the return high. And if you think about what could you achieve, what could you do in your business if you were to remove some of the personal obstacles that have been plaguing you from implementing all the information that you know you should be doing, that's really what this kind of a coaching mastermind is really about. It's removing the things that are keeping you from implementing the information you already have. So what would that look like if you were to remove some or all of your fear around warm chatting or some or all of your fear around following up with people? or some are all of your disorganization, or some are all of your perfectionism, or some are all of your procrastination. What would that look like if we were able to remove a significant portion of whatever it is that's holding you back at an internal level? And I'm telling you, that's the only thing that's holding us all back, myself included, are the internal obstacles. It's not because we don't have the information, it's because we're not implementing the information that we already have. So what would that look like if we were able to help you remove some of those obstacles and not just over a six week period of time or a three month period of time, but for the rest of your career in Mary Kay, you had way less resistance around doing the activities. You had way more support in implementing all the things that you want to implement, whether it's time management stuff or organization stuff or sales stuff or recruiting stuff or just family stuff and personal stuff. What would that look like for you and your business, not just from a financial standpoint, but from a joyful standpoint?
That's how I want you to think about this. So the link there is pinkcaddycoach.com forward slash 2020 hyphen mastermind. That will take you to a page that'll give you a little bit more information if you need it. And it'll give you the option to join us for the director mastermind. There's a 100% money back guarantee. So there's literally no financial risk. If you don't enjoy the program, if you don't think it's going to be massively valuable to you and give you a tremendous boost, not just in your personal business, but as a leader, if it's not helping you ignite other people in your business, then let us know and you'll get a full refund. But the thing is, you must work on yourself. The individual person is a hundred times more important than the information. The individual person, we call it the behavior versus the behavior. What most people are focusing on is how do I change the behavior? How do I change the things that I do? But they're not focusing enough time and energy on how do I shift myself? How do I apply what I know I need to be implementing to who I am as a person. And I could only go on for about 30 hours. What kind of changes that's made in my life, the kinds of shifts I've seen over the last 15 years of coaching people without individualized attention, your breakthroughs will always be restricted. I, I, I believe that wholeheartedly. There's not a single person that could get me to not believe that because this is what I've seen over and over and over and over and over again, hundreds and hundreds of times. But most people won't do it. There's not a single person that can't heal themselves or can't succeed at the level that they have the capacity for and that can't increase their capacity for success. There's not a single person that can't do the work. Almost everybody will choose not to, which means most people will allow their fears to suffocate their dreams. Most people will allow their insecurities to make the decisions about taking action toward joy and happiness and success. Don't allow your fears, don't allow your doubts, don't allow your insecurities, all of which can be changed to make the decisions about how you're going to live your life. But that's what's happening for almost everybody. This is a safe environment to let your hair down, to take your superhero cape off, to just be real and to succeed. That's what this mastermind is really all about. So if you guys have any questions about anything, you can email us. You can tag us inside the Pink Caddy Coaching Group or wherever you find us online. And we'll support you however we can. Right. Somebody says it explains why so many people join and then leave. Exactly. Most people join and leave everything in life. Mary Kay is not unique. Most people join relationships and leave. Most people join gyms and quit. Most people join jobs and quit. Most people join everything in life and leave. What they're actually running from is themselves. And one of the reasons is because they keep chasing things that don't have the capacity to fill them up because they don't know who they are. They don't know how to make the individual changes for this thing to really foundationally and fundamentally change their life. So somebody can join Mary Kay and Mary Kay could be the very thing that changes their entire life, changes their relationship to money, changes their relationship to their family, changes their relationship to their husband, changes everything and liberates them from everything holding them back in life. Mary Kay has the capacity to do that, but not if you enter into it from a broken lens, if you enter into it thinking that it's all about what everybody else is doing, if you enter into it from, from a comparison standpoint, from a wounded standpoint, but if you enter into this playing field with the right connection to yourself and commitment to yourself, then this just might change your entire life. But if you don't have the commitment to yourself and you don't have the connection to yourself, then replace Mary Kay with any other business, replace it with any other relationship, replace it with any other amount of money, and none of them will work. 
that's what we're doing here. That's what we're up to and that's what we're committed to in this particular mastermind program specifically for directors. So on that note, I hope this has been valuable. If there was something that really landed well for you, then please email me, let us know because we want to celebrate what's landing. If you have any questions, then also email us, let us know because we wanna support you in answering whatever questions you have, whether it's about this mastermind or content or an application of any of this stuff. So with that, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll talk to you all really soon. Take care.